Hey friends, my name is C and you're watching here Mr. Easy and welcome back to new video for A11 for the math and today we have core paper 1 for chapter 3 or topic 3 for series and we move on to 3.1 for the sums of natural numbers for the rules of examples video and we'll look into sigma and series but before you into it don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and ring the notification bell so you any future videos and we'll get started with sigma and series so here's the difference between sequence and series a sequence is an ordered list of numbers that often follow a specific pattern or a function. So for example, we have 1, 8, 15, 22, and 29, and they are a sequence. And a series, however, is the sum of the terms in the sequence. So for example, the sequence just now, we have 1, 8, 15, 22, and 29. The series would be 1 plus 8 plus 15 plus 22 and plus 29, where it's just basically the sum of the numbers. And here we have sigma. We can use sigma notation to write series clearly and concisely. So for sigma, it's basically the Greek, uh, the Greek letter sigma. Lowercase sigma will be like this, which is often used as standard deviation, which we'll look into it later in further statistics. And in the capital letter sigma, it's this right here. And it is used to represent sum, like the addition sum. So here we have an example. The sigma, the sum of 10r minus 1 from r equals 1 to r equals 3, it's basically 10 times 1 uh, minus 1, plus 10 times 2 minus 1, and 10 times 3 minus 1. Where as you can see, the r basically uh, goes from 1 to 2 to 3. And the numbers below and above the sigma symbol tell you which value of r to begin at, and which value to end at. And you go up in increments of 1 each time. So, so we have this example right here. We have the sum of r from r equals 1 to n, where n is just like a number. And it's basically equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus whatever plus n, where you can see that it goes up by 1 each time. And now we have the sum of constant and natural numbers. So the sum, to find the sum of a series of constant terms, you can use the formula, the sum of 1 from r equals 1 to n equals n, just n. And the formula for the sum of the first n natural numbers is the sum of r from r equals 1 to r equals n is equal to half n times n plus 1. So for example, we have this sum of the first n natural numbers. We have the sum of r from r equals 1 to r equals 50, and it's basically equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus whatever, up until r plus 50. And we can use the formula half n times n plus 1, so half n and n plus 1, and that gets you 1275, like so. And here we have more sum rules. To find the sum of a series that doesn't start at r equals 1, we can use this formula right here. So the sum of f of r from r equals k to n, where k is not 1, is equal to the sum of f of r from r equals 1 to n, minus the sum of f of r from r equals 1 to, to k minus 1. And it's important that it's k minus 1. So for example, if we have the sum of, let's say, f of r from r equals 3 to, let's say, 9, it's equal to the sum of f of r, I'll just not write it here because to save space, the sum of f of r from r equals 1 to 9 minus the sum of f of r from r equals 1 to 2, like so. And number 2, we can rearrange expressions involving sigma notations, for example, taking out a constant term. So here we have an example, the sum of k f of r, where k is a constant, from r equals 1 to n is equal to k, where it's a constant, times the sum of f of r from r equals 1 to n, where we can see that we basically took out the constant k. And number 3, we can rearrange expressions involving sigma notations, for example, separating the functions. So let's say we have the sum of two functions, f of r plus g of r. We can separate it into the sum of f of r plus the sum of g of r, where it's basically like separate. And here we have an example. Show that the sum of r from r equals 5 to 2n minus 1 equals 2n squared minus n minus 10, where n is bigger than or equal to 3. So we, what we can do is that we can first write out the original expression, which I will do right here. Sum of r from r equals 5 equals 5 to 2n minus 1. Oops, 2n minus 1, 2n minus 1. We have to split into two sigma, two sum notations, because this isn't 1. So it has to start from 1, r equals 1, r, 2n minus 1, minus the sum of uh, r equals 1, equals 1, oops, equals 1, r, and the top one right here 
it's basically this number minus 1, so 5 minus 1 is 4. So, so therefore we can now simplify the, the whole uh, the sum. So we know that the sum of r is basically half n, n plus 1. So the first one will be half, n is 2 n minus 1, and n plus 1 is 2 n minus 1 plus 1, which is 2 n. So, n minus half n, n plus 1, half n, n is 4, and n plus 1 will be 5. So we can simplify by just simplifying some terms. So for example, this 2 cancel out with this half. So we're just left with n times 2n minus 1. Minus this, um, sorry, this, this uh, 4 cancel out with the, two, with the half to get 2. So it's just 2 times 5, which is equal to minus 10. So therefore, it'll be 2n squared minus n minus 10. Actually, let me just use a new color. So it will be 2n squared, if we were to expand the bracket, 2n squared minus n minus 10. And we can see that that's basically what we need to get from here. So we can just put QED, which shows that what we sh which means what we need to show has been shown. QED, like so. And here we have another question. Evaluate the sum of 3r plus 1 from r equals 1 to r equals 25. So let me just write it out. Sum of 3r plus 1 from r equals 1 to 25. We know that we can split into two different sums. So the sum of 3r from r equals 1 to 25 minus, sorry, plus the sum of 1 from r equals 1 to 25. And we know that this is a constant term, 3 is a constant, so we can pull it out here, right? So it would be, so be equal to 3 times the sum of r from r equals 1 to 25 plus just the sum of 1 from r equals 1 to 25. And we know that for the sum formula for the for the n natural numbers, it's basically half times n times n plus 1. So we have a constant term here of 3, so we have to do 3 times half of n, n is 25, and n plus 1 is 26. So, plus the sum of 1s is basically n, right? So it's just plus 25. Therefore, if we were to type in our calculator, 3 times a half times 25 times 26 plus 25, and this will equal to 1,000. Like, so 1,000, and that's the answer. And lastly, we have two questions here. Show that uh, the sum of 7r minus 4 from r equals 1 to r equals n equals half n times 7n minus 1. So I'm just going to do this straight away by just splitting the, the sigma notation. So we know that this can be split into uh, the sum of 7r minus the sum of 4, right? And we have to get this 7 out because it's a constant term. So it'll just be 7 sigma r minus. And remember the sum of 1s, right? We need, to, we need to have a 1 in the middle here. It's right inside the sigma notation. And 4, we know that 4 equals 4 times 1. So what we can do is that we can basically just um, factor out a 4 out. Or like take out a 4. Because 4 is like a constant. So it'll be 4 sigma 1. So as you can see, there's the sum of natural numbers and there's the sum of ones, like so. Therefore, this can be written as the sum of, I'm sorry, this will be equal to 7 times the sum of r from r equals 1 to n minus 4 times the sum of 1 from r equals 1 to n. And we know that the basically is 7 times half n, n plus 1, half uh, n n plus 1, like so, minus 4n, right? Because this right here is just n. So what we can do now is that we can basically just um, simplify the whole thing. Wait, but before that, we can basically just factorize some, some terms, right? So we know that we need a half and an n out because it says here, and there's a half n, and we can factorize and half n out here. So we can do this, we can do half n and bracket 7 times n plus 1 because it's what left with 7 and n plus 1. Minus, we took out an n already, so it's okay. And 4, 4 divided by a half is equal to 8. So it'll be 8, like so. Because if you were to times this by this term, you get this term over here. And if you were to times half n by minus 8, you get minus 4n. And therefore, we can basically just simplify the whole expression to so get half n and 7n. And here is basically 7 times 1 minus 8, which is 7 minus 8, which is minus 1. 
like so. And part B, hence evaluate the sum of 7r minus 4 from r equals 20 to r equals 50. So whenever you have this, this kind of question right here, and we have to look at the, the question just now, right here, right? We can notice that we, have to, we can use this expression to find the sum of this. But we have to make sure that we, the, 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 the lower limit is, not, is 1. In this case, it's not 1, so we have to split up the whole um, sum. So the sum of 7r minus 4 from r equals 20 to r equals 50 is equal to the sum of 7r minus 4 from r equals 1 to 50 minus the sum of 7r minus 4 from r equals 1 to, and just bracket this, bracket, 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 to 19, because it's basically this number minus 1, right? So what we can do now is that we, can, we know that this one right here, this expression, is equal to half n 7n minus 1, where n in this case is 50. So we can just do half 50, oops, let's just write it clearly, half 50 times 7 times 50 minus 1, like so. And the second expression right here, we know that the n value is basically the upper limit is 19. So we have to do half times 19 times 7 times 19 minus 1, right? So it'd be minus half times 19 times 7 times 19 Oops, minus 1. Sorry, it's a bit messy here. So let me just evaluate some expressions. So half times 50 times 7 times 50 minus 1 is equal to 8,725. And, oops, sorry. And you have to minus the second expression, half times 19 times 7 times 19 minus 1. And that gets us 1,245, 54, sorry. And what you do is, is that you basically just minus both sides, I mean, minus it. So 1,725 minus 1,254, and that gets us 7,471. And that's the final answer. And that's it for this rules and example of this video for 3.1 for the sums of natural numbers. And I hope you will find it useful and helpful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and ring the notification button to any future videos. And if you have any comments or constructive criticisms about my channel or my YouTube or my Instagram, you can leave them down below and I'll reply to them. And check out my social media in the description, for example, LinkedIn or YouTube or Instagram. And if you need any learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check out my website in the description or you can type it out in your browser at www.emiseasy.com. And I hope you will find it useful and helpful and I'll see you all in the next video, which will be 3.1 for the sums of natural numbers for the questions video which would be fun and interesting. But until then, stay safe and happy learning.